Hi, so it's a beautiful spring morning and I'm about to set out on one of my favourite walks in Coffs Harbour. This is the mangrove boardwalk that runs alongside the Coffs Creek. It's part of the bigger Coffs Creek walk. So come with me and I'll show you some wonderful sights. To get to this walk, you just uh, drive to the end of Hood Street, which is off Harbour Drive. And you'll, if you drive to the end of the street, you'll come to the start of this walk. It's only a short walk. It's a board walk through the mangroves. It's a very easy walk. It takes about five or 10 minutes and um, it's suitable for wheelchair access and it takes you through some really interesting environment. So this first part of the walk for about the first 20 metres in this transition zone between the end of the road and the start of the mangrove you've got this kind of almost like rainforest with palms and creepers and yeah it very much feels like a rainforest it only lasts for about 20 metres and then you come to the high tide zone where you start to see the mangroves coming in here. Now this mangrove, it's a species known as Avicennia marina or grey mangrove and this is the indigenous species to this Coffs Coast area. There's over 80 different species of mangrove around the world and they all have their own little peculiarities but one thing they have in common is their ability to actually adapt and grow in these harsh salt water environments and it's really fascinating how they do this. This is a particularly particularly interesting time to be looking at these because they've just come through their reproductive cycle. So a few months ago these trees were all covered in tiny little white flowers and those, that's the beginning of the cycle. Now there's this little fella here and I'd call him a late bloomer because you can see down here there's little buds, flower buds still here that haven't opened and I expect looking at them they probably will open over the next month. In fact I can see one now here that's actually uh, has just opened and you see it's a pretty uninteresting flower it's a little four petal white flower it doesn't have much of a scent but still the bees will come along and pollinate it and once that happens they turn into little fruits I'll see if I can just find one of these little fruits here okay so this is the fruit here it's like a little squished plum with a little black stalk coming out of the bottom of it now these will, flowers will turn into this fruit and this is where it gets really interesting because if this was a normal fruit tree what would happen next is the fruit would drop onto the ground and hopefully uh, it would rot and the seeds would germinate and grow into a new tree or otherwise the fruit could be pecked off by a bird and then the seeds would be pooped out somewhere else and hopefully again germinate and grow but when you think about it that doesn't work for this type of environment because if these fruits just dropped onto the into the water they would then float around on the high tide and probably rot so the tree has evolved a great mechanism for dealing with this and that is that these actually ger germinate while they're still attached to the tree and they grow that little spiky root out the bottom and then the tree sheds them and they fall into the, the mud below and you can see down here we've got some examples of ones that have actually uh, are sitting around in the mud but they're already viable plants in their own right so they they're, they've all they need to do is just that root just needs to extend out into the mud and get a grip and they will grow into another tree. So that's quite remarkable, isn't it? Let's keep going. Okay, so this is what happens next. You can see down here, one of these little fruits has grown a little stem out of the mud and it's still got those immature leaves there. But you can see just popping out of the top is another stem. And on the top of that stem, you've got the adult leaves that are very similar to the leaves on the tree. Now, this brings us to the next remarkable thing about these trees. You see all these little spiky roots that are sticking up into the air. 
Well, those are called pneumatophores. And this is how the tree manages to survive. It's the secret to surviving in this harsh saline conditions. So these trees are underwater. Their root system is completely underwater for half of each day. And if that happened to any other tree, it would die. Even if the water was fresh water, it would still die because they need to be able to, trees need to be able to extract oxygen from out of the soil to survive. And if they're underwater, they would literally drown. But again, these clever mangroves have evolved a solution to this problem. So these pneumatophores are like snorkel roots and they actually can draw oxygen out of the air while the tree is actually underwater. Now eventually the tide will come in high enough that even the pneumatophores will be covered. So the way it stops the water getting in when they're covered, the surface of these roots is cov covered with special cells, like they're like a valve cell called a lenticel. And when the root is exposed to the air, the lenticels open up and can draw in oxygen. But then when the tide comes in, the lenticels will close and block out the salt water. It's not a completely full, um, perfect system, so some salt will get into the tree, and so the tree has a different way of dealing with that. So the, the leaves on these trees actually have little, um, little glands that can excre excrete salt. So the, the salt will form on the outside of the leaf and then when it rains it'll wash it off the tree. So that's how it sheds salt there. The other method that it uses is it directs any salt into the older leaves like these ones here and then it sheds the whole leaf with the salt in it. And so that's the secondary way that it actually gets rid of the unwanted salt. Pretty clever, huh? Okay, let's keep walking. This is a great boardwalk. Uh, it's a very easy walk and it's just really relaxing and particularly in these hard times we've had with all the lockdowns and whatnot, it's just a great way to relax and just empty your mind of all the bad thoughts and be with nature for a while. Now we're coming to a really nice part here, or the first viewing platform I would call it, where we actually get a view of the creek. And it looks like it's a sort of probably middle tide at the moment. So, um, We'll be able to see some of the sand flats exposed here. And there we go. So this is the sand flats of Coffs Creek. Now it's a little bit windy this morning and I'm a little bit late getting here so normally there'd be a lot of wading birds out there early in the morning and late in the afternoon we get all manner of birds out there oh, I can see one over there actually off in the distance there's a, a white heron uh, no sorry it's not it's a seagull but we do get uh, herons here and obviously seagulls pelicans um, the uh, oyster catchers which are a very interesting bird and many other types of birds wading birds you see here and also it's a popular spot for people to throw a line in and catch a fish or hopefully catch a fish all right let's keep going eh? now this is a little bit interesting here you see down there these little balls of sand and they form patterns in the sand like that and these are made by a very tiny little crab and this is what it does when it's eating so it burrows into the sand and it filters the sand through its jaws and extracts any sort of nutrients that are in there and then all that's left is sand which it rolls into a ball and just places onto its little heap there and so they form these very interesting patterns and 
these will get washed away on the next high tide. So what you see here has only been made since the last high tide. So you can see they're very industrious little creatures. And uh, yeah, they have to do a lot of work to get a feed. Okay, let's keep going. So the mangrove is such an important part of the ecosystem here because it does so many functions. Firstly, its roots being so extensive and shallow, they actually stabilize the sand and the mud. And so they protect the, the banks of this river from the um, erosion that would occur from high tides and wave action. Ah, oh, you hear that? Did you hear that beautiful bird song? That is a gerigong, or a mangrove warbler, and it has the most beautiful melodic sound. <laughs> and they call out to each other across the mangrove to let each other know where they are. Now, I won't even try to show you what this bird looks like because they're very hard to see because they're small. They're only eight centimeters long and they weigh six grams, which is about the weight of a teaspoon of salt. They're not a particularly interesting bird to look at. They're just a sort of gray brown color, but they have this most beautiful call. And in the mornings early, they're all going off and it's, it's just a beautiful, sound to greet you in the morning when you're going for a walk. If I do see one I'll try and film it but yeah it's unlikely. Okay, so check this out, all right? Imagine that you're a fish, a baby fish. You see all these roots sticking up here. You can see how dense they are in there. And this is a perfect nursery for a baby fish because when the tide comes up and these roots are covered, they make like a maze. And the little baby fish can swim happily between all of those roots and they can peck away and forage for food and they're completely safe from predators because the bigger fish that would otherwise predate on them are too big to nego negotiate their way around all of these roots it's just a nightmare for them so they literally can't get in here so this makes the perfect nursery for baby fish so that's another important job that is done by these mangroves Yeah, pretty remarkable trees, aren't they? And there's another thing they do as well, you know. They, um, they are like the, the liver of the ocean because not only do they filter out salt, but they also filter out toxic chemicals, runoff from farms, fertilizers and whatnot. Even heavy metals in industrial areas, they can actually um, absorb those into their structure and effectively filter them out of the out of the surrounding ground. So they really are remarkable. There's those birds again. Okay, we're coming up to another really nice spot on this walk. And this is another great viewing platform and also a great spot to fish. So you see here these couple of chairs. It's a great place to just sit there and throw a line in. And uh, down below you've got this nice Water, the tide's running out at the moment, uh, and that's about mid-tide. So you often see fish here. The water's clear enough. Oh, there's some there, you see. So these are a regular feature. And um, I can see brim down there, but you'll see brim and whiting and flathead and 
all sorts of fish so it's a really good spot and you see how they're all just floating there in the current with their mouths open basically waiting for the food to to flow in and uh, we get a good view here up and down the creek so this is heading out towards the ocean down that way and you can see the sand flats there again as I said it's a little bit late for the wading birds now a bit late in the day and a bit too hot and sunny for them but they'll be back in the afternoon and uh, there's a family across the other side there and you can also see some mangroves on the other side of the bank of the creek there stabilizing the bank in the same way as these ones really is a beautiful spring morning today perfect for a walk I should have got up a bit earlier though eh? okay so we'll come back in now into the mangrove this walk's been here for a number of years and uh, it's just a great piece of infrastructure that the council have put here but of course they did create a bit of a rod for their back because now they need to maintain it and so you can see down here there's uh, some yellow paint marks so this is where someone's come through and marked the, the parts of the boardwalk that need repair and it's a constant job so they're always in here you know marking and then they'll they'll replace boards that are badly rotten or just refix the ones that have sprung up because often the the nails will pull out so there's a lot of upkeep in this uh, but I really think it's worth it because it gets so much use uh, it's so popular with the locals and and tourists and it gives you this nice uh, view that you wouldn't otherwise get of the mangroves it's pretty hard to walk in mangroves if you don't have a boardwalk as you can imagine because you've got all of these um, sticking up pneumatophores little spikes it's like walking on a bed of nails and it's muddy and you know you'll get you'll sink into the mud and get in a horrible mess <coughs> so I know that from my childhood because I remember playing in mangroves so it's really great to have a boardwalk beautiful sunny morning now one thing about this uh, there's a sign at the front that says don't ride bicycles on the boardwalk you need to take that very seriously if you've got a bike because uh, a year ago roughly there was a woman riding a bicycle along here and uh, she clipped the edge of the boardwalk and went over the handlebars landed into the mud below and unfortunately the spot where she landed there was a broken piece of mangrove tree and it basically pierced her chest and uh, she had to be airlifted to hospital so it was a very nasty accident so you need to take that very seriously uh, if you've got a bicycle you can dismount and walk it through but I would suggest you just leave it at the entrance and then walk back double back and pick it up it's only a short walk I'll show you in a minute uh, but it doesn't take long to get back to where you started look at that an ibis there you go plenty of food in here for birds and he's got just the right beak for sticking into the mud and picking them up he probably eats a lot of those little crabs I was telling you about okay so we're getting towards the end now and I just wanted to show you here you can see how far these nematophores extend you know there's ones going out there that are probably 20 meters away from the the parent tree so they're very extensive these roots and there's so many of them that gives the tree plenty of opportunity to draw in oxygen and and other nutrients and and water they actually can filter the salt out so the, the tree can can get water 
that's basically close to fresh. So out there in the middle you can see some seagulls. I guess they're the most common bird and they're always here. But yeah, as I said, at different times of the day you'll see the bigger wading birds. We saw that ibis, but you'll also see uh, herons and oyster catchers. I've even seen a spoonbill here. You don't see them very often, but I have seen them. It's a nice spot for kayaking as well uh, when the tide's in. You often see the kayakers going up and down the creek here. As I say, we're coming to the end now. And this is kind of, this boardwalk is like a deviation off the main track which we're about to rejoin here and uh, <coughs> this is a shared bicycle and pedestrian path at a place called England's Park and if we look down that way that's back towards where we entered so yeah it's probably only 100 meters or so uh, back to where we started so if you did leave your bicycle there you just you could take this track back and you'll be on it in no time at all and if you keep going along this way this path goes out to the ocean and it continues along just inland of the beach and if you follow that all the way along it takes you out to the jetty the Coffs Harbour jetty so it's a lovely walk if you want to do the whole walk and yeah, I would normally do that uh, and just take this board, this mangrove boardwalk as a bit of a, a nice deviation off the main track. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, feel free to leave some comments. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. So check this out. I brought that fruit home from the walk today through the mangroves and you see there it's got that little root the starting of a root now watch what happens when I drop this in some water it flips over straight away you see to ensure that the root is always facing downwards so of course when it floats in on the tide and then the tide washes out it'll already have its root in contact with the, the mud below it See, nature thinks of everything, doesn't it? Amazing.